Hello from Free Students. In this section, we are going to talk about factorization using different identities. And in Form 2, you should have learned some before. For example, we have a method called taking out the common factor. Let's say we have ex expression like this one, a times b plus a times c. We have a common factor of a here. And then we can just take it out and then write it as a times b plus c. And we call this method taking out the common factor. And we have another method called the grouping like terms. Let's say we have another expression a times b, a b plus a c plus x b plus x c. We can see that we don't have a common factor across all four terms. But in fact, we can find a common factor a in the first two terms and another common factor x in the last two terms. Therefore, we can group the four terms into two groups. We can write the expression as a b plus a c. We add a bracket here and then another bracket x b plus x c. And therefore we take out a like this a bracket b plus c and the other common factor x and now we have this expression it happens that we have another common factor b plus c here and therefore we apply the taking out common factor method again b plus c times a plus x look we have the a here again and then we can write the a in the second bracket and then we have another x here and write it inside the second bracket and the final answer will be b plus c times a plus x and we call this method grouping like terms okay we have another quite important factorization identity in form 2 and you should remember the name of this identity identity is called the difference of two squares where a square minus b square equals to a plus b times a minus b or you can write this as a minus b times a plus b they are just the same and uh, this expression can be easily proved by expanding the right hand side we have a square plus a b and then minus b a minus b square and we cross out these two terms a b minus b a they cancel out each other and we come up with the expression a square minus b square equals to the right hand side and now just take a look at a very simple example factorize 1 minus a square since 1 is a square number we can write it in this way 1 square minus a square and therefore we can easily come up with the answer 1 minus a times 1 plus a oh well, example 1 and then uh, we have to factorize x square minus 25 and again 25 we can write it as the square of 5 and therefore we have x minus 5 times x plus 5 easy oh well, example 2 and uh, factorize 4x square minus 49y square and uh, this is a bit more difficult no? but again we can write the form of difference of two square like this 4x square we can write this as the square of 2x and then 49y square the square of 7y and now we can see that this is actually a form of difference of two square 
the square of 2x minus the square of 7y. And therefore, our answer will be 2x minus 7y times 2x plus 7y. Okay, example 3. And uh, factorize the square of a minus b minus 16. Again, uh, we have a very obvious pattern of the difference of two square. But uh, this time, uh, the square, the first square number is a bit more complicated. Nevertheless, we can simply apply the method of difference of two square again. Again, and then we can write the expression as the square of a minus b minus the square of 4. Therefore, we have a minus b minus 4 times a minus b plus 4. And we have also have to check that there are no further factors uh, inside these two brackets. Remember, the spirit of factorization is that we have to find as many factors as possible. And uh, this is our spirit of factorization. Find as many factors as possible. Well, here comes example 4. Factorize the square of a minus b minus the square of c minus d. And uh, we applied the difference of two square again. This is our a and uh, this is our b. We have a minus b times a plus b. Therefore, the first factor will be a minus b minus c minus d. And then we add another bracket outside. And the second factor will be a minus b plus c minus d. And of course we have to simplify these two factors. Just expand or remove the bracket. A minus B minus C. And then we have to be careful about the change of the minus sign. We have minus minus D. Minus minus D. And therefore we have plus D here. And the second factor will be A minus B plus C minus D. And then this is our final answer. Since we cannot find any further factors inside these two factors. And now we have example 5. Factorize 2x squared minus 32. And it happens that 2x squared is actually not a square number. And so did 32. 32 is not a square number. Therefore we cannot directly apply the difference of two square method here. Therefore we have to try some other methods such as taking out common factor or grouping like terms and we cannot apply difference of two square here uh, at least up to this moment we cannot do that but what about uh, taking out common factor well, it happens that we have a common factor of two here therefore we can just use this take the two out and then we have 2 times x squared minus 16 and now we have the form of difference of 2 squared x squared minus 16 therefore we have 2 times x squared minus the square 4 and this will be our final answer 2 times x minus 4 times x plus 4. And now we have some kind of strategy in tackling this type of questions. Because we have to apply all the methods we have learned in Form 2 and Form 3. And in fact the order of using these methods actually depends on the question. And there is no fixed order. And we have to learn from our experience. Okay, finally we come up to the final example of this section. Factorize 4 minus m squared plus 2n minus mn. And it happens that we have a total of 4 terms here. And we cannot find any common factor 
across the four terms. Remember, we have now three different factorization methods taking out common factor. We're playing like terms. And then a difference of two square. And the order of applying these methods, it actually depends on the question. For example, in this question, we can see that 4 minus m squared is a form of difference of 2 squared. And 2n minus mn, we can find a common factor of n here. Then what we can try, just try, separate the four terms into two groups, in which the first two terms are arranged in one group. And then the third and the fourth term arranged in the second group. Therefore, in the first group, we can apply difference of 2 squared. 2 minus m times 2 plus m. In the second group, we take out the common factor n. n times 2 minus m. And we are lucky. Eh? In this case, we have the factor 2 minus m here. Therefore, we can write 2 minus m times 2 plus m. Eh? We'll we have a term 2 plus m left behind in the first group and then plus n left in the second group. We can see that plus n comes from here. And we can see that we cannot find any further factors in the answer. Therefore, this will be our final answer. But you may ask, in separate the four terms into two groups, why choose the first and the second? and then the third and the fourth into two groups. Why not we choose the first and the third term as one group and then the second and the fourth term as another group? In fact, we can do an experiment. Uh, let's try. Uh, 4 plus 2n minus m squared minus m n. Again, we can Add a bracket here. Minus m square plus m n. Since we have a minus sign before the bracket, therefore this minus sign should change to a plus sign. And now we can apply taking our common factor in the first group 2 plus n minus. And at the same time, we can take out the common factor m in the second group. And we have m times m plus n. And it happens, we reach a dead end. We can do nothing here, since we have no common factor, no grouping like terms, and no difference of two square. And therefore, this method, now this grouping method does not work for this question. And of, of course, we can try grouping the first term and the fourth term and the second term and third term in the two groups. Let's just try again. 4 minus mn minus m squared plus 2n. We separate them into two groups. Again, we have minus bracket m squared minus 2n since we have a minus sign before the bracket. And again, we reach another dead end. We have no common factor no grouping like terms, and no difference of 2 square. And therefore, our strategy of grouping, uh, of grouping, in fact, there are several ways to group four terms. Uh, we can choose the first term and the second term as one group, and then the third and the fourth for another group. And then the second, the second way will be one the first and the third and the second and the fourth term. And lastly, the first term and the fourth term and the second term and third term as another group. And in fact, different questions will use different strategy of grouping. We have to try one by one, uh, one by one. Sometimes we may need to select the first and the third term and then the second and the fourth term as two groups. And sometimes we may need this one too. And uh, it happens that this question, choosing the first and the second term as one group, 
the third and the fourth term as another group, it just work fine. 